Hey guys, Jackal. Nicole Sauce. Hi. Hi. How's it going? I live in paradise. Oh, you do live in paradise, I hear. Yeah. So, coming up on the end. I can't believe we're to principle 10 already. There's only one more. And that's the fun one. Yeah, you're going to love it. I'm looking forward to 11, but let's do 10 first, and then you have to join me on a series on my YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We'll get you over there. I might need to wait for you to come back stateside so it's easier. Yeah, we'll make it work. We always do. That's true. But number 10, anticipate the future and adapt to it. Don't resist it. This is a good one. This is one we should all learn. Yeah. And I was kind of thinking about it before we jumped on. And like one of the first examples that springs to mind is like companies like Walmart and Kmart and Target. And they're all now scrambling. Walmart's probably one of the biggest ones that's trying to outcompete Amazon because like they wanted their brick and mortar store and that was their thing, and they were trying to stick with that. Amazon comes along, free shipping, free two-day shipping, online, constantly dumping all of their money back into the company and advancing their technology, leaving Walmart, like, trying to play catch-up. Yeah, although Walmart's probably the only one that's doing a reasonable job of competing with Amazon, I would say, from what I've seen. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of why I was using them as an example is, I mean, and even down to just pricing, like you look up pricing on Amazon and you look it up on Walmart and it usually matches like to the penny. Yeah. So. Or Walmart's two cents cheaper, but they take an extra day to get it to you. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just one example but another one that i was kind of thinking of earlier was like wilbur and orville right and like there's a whole backstory that i won't go into there but those guys were innovators they were the ones creating the technology yeah and I think a lot of people are like, well, you know, oh, well, I'm not like a fill in the blank entrepreneur or a programmer or a computer person or whatever. Well, the Wright brothers weren't aeronautical engineers. Yeah. I'm just saying. Like, so, that, wasn't, that wasn't even a thing at the time. No, they just got off the ground. Uh, you know, if you, so tapping into web stuff, I think about, like, I build websites for people right now, right? And I'm pretty sure within the next five years, my job will be completely obsolete because they will finally have figured out how to make it so easy for anybody to build their own website that I'm, what I'm needed for is your marketing copy. That's it. Yeah. And I've been watching that advent go from, like, I've been doing this for 20 years on and off. It used to be really hard to build a website. Now, I like, it's a lot easier than it was, uh, but my job's going to go away. That, that part of my job's gone in five years, probably. Yeah, and so it's, it's definitely a situation where you're going to have to adapt, and you will, because you already see this coming. Like, you're already anticipating that being a thing. So yeah. So it does start to happen, you're going to have a much easier transition. And I'm yeah. Gonna, good. Yeah, I was agreeing with you. Okay. Um, but I'm kind of in the boat to where like I'm kind of playing catch up on some of the technology stuff because like it just a lot of it just irritates me, and especially things like Facebook and all these other social media platforms. Everything is so painful to do as compared to some of the other stuff that I'm accustomed to. So it's like, it just, I can't stand it. So I'm trying to figure out how do I do this? How do I do that? 
and just very basic stuff. Yeah. You know, I, I was asked yesterday what advice I would give somebody who wants to build their online network. And my answer was build it like you would build your local network or your in-person network. I think what I see a lot of people doing wrong online is they get really salesy or they get really schmarmy or they tell the fake story. And you do want to put your best foot forward, but it's if you treat it like normal, if you treat people like real people online and in real life, you do better online. And a lot of people go online and they forget that you know, like basic courtesy <laughs> or they get salesy or they're, they're like willing to call people names that you would never call somebody to their face. So um, it's just something I thought about as you're talking about doing things. Uh, I know a lot of people who like refuse to do email, for example. I know people younger than you who refuse to do email. I don't even know why, but that also brings up another example. I just remembered this one. Speaking of email, the post office. The post office after you had, what was it, AOL and Hotmail and MSN and all of these other companies offering free email the post office tried to create their own email system, but they were gonna charge you per email, just like you would pay for a stamp. It's like, you, no, you missed that bus, dude. Like the boat left and you weren't on the boat. Like that boat's already gone. Yeah, and now the post office delivers packages for Amazon, so there you go. Yeah. I, you know, my letter service is great here. I hear all these horror stories about the post office. Most of the time I have good luck with them and I'm happy about that. I probably should leave a present in my mailbox at some point. Okay, so let's go from abstract though. So anticipate the future. You know automation is coming. Yep. You know you need to be digital. Yep. You know our economy as automation comes is gonna have some, like we gotta figure out how the heck we're supposed to earn money and get our food together what does this mean for the person like what advice would you give people to anticipate the future and roll with it well I mean, first off just paying attention just i mean listening to i was listening to one of jack spirico's podcasts earlier today and it got me on a thought process of the job opportunities that are available currently and what's paying at what levels. And so it was just because I was paying attention to his podcast and he wasn't even talking about, he was talking about um, zone four permaculture. And I got off on this just because of some of the stuff that they were bringing up with um, the guy that I can't remember his name right now, but that guy. Yes, that guy. <laughs> was it Jeff Lawton? No, it wasn't Jeff Lawton. I think it might have been Ben Falk. Okay, Maybe. yeah, probably. Actually, I can tell you right now because it's still on my podcast feed. No, 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 just keep going. We're recording a video. You'll bore your listeners. But um, I was listening to them, and he was talking about how he kind of got started in all of that. And, oops, I just dropped my phone. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> how he got kind of started in that and going through college and all this other stuff, and it got me to thinking about it, and it just got me on the whole thought process of the different jobs that are available nowadays. Yeah. And I've also been listening to a little bit of – um pulling the thread with John Willis from SOE. And I haven't listened to a whole lot of their stuff just because I don't have much time right now. But, I mean, some of the stuff they talk about, I mean, they talk about a wide variety of different things. And, you know, you start to learn to be able to kind of read between the lines, interpret, so forth and so on. 
And I think that's the best starting point is just learning to really be able to read between the lines and then actually start listening. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. You know, we were talking before, and this is anticipating the future and being flexible about it. Flexible, that's a new word. So a friend of mine sells CBD infused coffee. And he told me that his payment processor shut him down when they realized there was CBD in his coffee. And so I picked up the phone. I called a processor who I knew was pro second amendment and said, do you do CBD transactions? And she said, it's interesting that you asked that question. Cause this morning we were talking about if we would or would not. And then she talked to the owner of the company, called me back and said, you've just put us over the edge. We're going to do it. Nice. And that's a company that's anticipating the future. So like while PayPal or whoever is shutting people down for arms sales, you know, like legal ones or CBD oil, also legal, they're like, we're going to handle this quote unquote high risk stuff, figure out which banks can process that and be the first to market. And I was like, that's brilliant because now I might just use them because of that, even though I don't do anything with arms or CBD oil. Yeah. And that's also, I mean, that's tapping a niche market too. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be, but like everybody is starting to legalize hemp, legalize marijuana, legalize CBD, all this other stuff. They're legalizing it all. That's the direction that everything is going. Yeah. It's but, marijuana's going to be legal before I die. Yeah. But everybody is... Oh, oh, well, you know, if they're doing that, we're not going to do business with them. Yeah. Okay. You just lost the first mover advantage. Yeah. Like, Amazon has first mover advantage. And who's competing with them right now? Walmart? Maybe kind of, sort of. But not really. Yeah. Somebody's going to replace Amazon. I just don't know who yet. Eh, it's possible. It has been done. There will be a different innovation that gives Amazon a run for their money. I don't know what it is yet, though. Yeah. And, I mean, if you look at, like, I mean, MySpace had first mover advantage, and you're laughing. I on MySpace. I actually, I forgot about MySpace until, like, Three or four months ago, I was looking up something on a band. Yeah. And I came across their MySpace thing and was like, oh, my God, these people still exist? MySpace still exists, although my account got, like, they just deleted me because I didn't log in for so long. And somebody else took my name. Yeah, but, I mean, the point with that one is just the fact that they are still around, but, like, I didn't even realize it. Like, because Facebook took over. Yeah, AOL is still around, too. No. Uh, yeah. But Payless oh. Shoe Source is going down, so for what that's worth. Yeah. So, I mean, I think we kind of beat this one up. Yeah, I, I would say this. So, practically speaking, what this means for you, or you, the viewer, is when you feel yourself resisting something, like, like literally, this is CBD cream. It took me six months to decide to buy this thing. I have a, a skin condition that comes up sometimes. It's a rash that I was using steroid oil for to get it to go away when it comes up. That works instantly and it's natural and it's better for me. It took me six months to make up my mind because I was being resistant to something new. When you feel yourself doing that, like check that and, and look because it may just be that the world is changing and you need to realize it. Yeah. Nope. I think that pretty much covers that one. I mean, I think so too. What else can you possibly say? The same thing over again another time. Yeah, we could do that, but all right, guys. Anyway, till next time, the last one, probably the most fun one. The next one's going to be a long one. Bye.